this circle, this shape in here, and the corners and stuff, is what I want you to be experts on. We have three elements. We have the infinity symbol, the lazy eight. We have the green element, which is the pyramid, let's say. It does not connect on the base. It connects at the top. That's very important because it's a vector. And we have the gold right here, which is the emanation coming out of the center. Okay, which is the primal point of unity. It's zero where and when. Why do I call this Easter eggs? Why do I call it cookie crumbs? And why do I say, well, the bounded infinity is what this is. Numbers are real. It's because I'm about to show you, when we do a computer program, godly, I mean, the programmers leave us little messages if we are lucky enough to find them. God left us big messages. Okay. And these are what are called his signs and attributes. Okay. Everyone still with me? Okay. So, we count on a circumference. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. But as I already said, time on the third dimension moves in a spiral, and it does not move linearly. So, I'm going to show you, and everything starts from the inside out in creation. Everything inside out arose inside out. So I'm, we're going to now stick on time, though, and we're going to follow the pathway of, of time in our physical world, third dimension, curving, warped universe. Number one, we have no trouble with. One God, one universe. What does it do? It doubles to two. What does two do? It doubles to four. Well, that's definitely how things work in our universe. We have four cells, eight cells in conception when we're conceived. Then we have 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, no trouble? Okay. Now 4 doubled and becomes 8. Okay. And 8 doubles and becomes 16. Okay. Now these charts I'm covering up, we're going to be coming back to, so you don't have to be concerned if you didn't see all the information. I'm going to actually reverse my path as well. So sure enough, I went 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. But on our circle here, we still have a 7. You see our 7 over here? Okay. Um, now, where did I get that 7 from? I said 1 plus 6 equals 7. No problem? As Alistair said, he said, like I'm going to repeat this. What did he say? Numerology is the something, something, something. Yeah. Yeah. We got. He isn't. That's the problem with life. We hear all this great stuff, and that's why we have this. Right. It's also interesting, though. You know, the casting out nine. So another way to think of that is uh, that it's the remainder. When you divide nine into sixteen, you get seven. It's the remainder. It's, it's how many you've gone over. Say it one more time. If you divide nine into uh, sixteen, you get one and uh, seven. Uh, seven left over, right? Yeah, taking a mod. Right, you're taking, you're doing mod nine arithmetic, actually, with the right. that Sixteen line. divided by nine equals what? Equals one with remainder seven, right? Seven. No, it can't be. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. sixteen is one plus six is seven. Right. That's, oh, so one remainder, remainder seven? You're looking at the remainder. Another way to look at what you're doing is to look at the remainder. Oh. This is casting out nine. You're casting out how many times nine went into it, and you're looking at the number that's left over. So it's as if we say 12 o'clock, then we say 1 o'clock instead of 13 o'clock because we're starting from zero over again. Yeah, we're going, we're going, just like you said, we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then this is 10. Yeah. 1 plus 0 is 1, 11, 1 and 1 is 2. After you divide 9 into 10, you get 1 left over. So it's, it's the excess of, oh. of going around the clock once. Like well, Barney's going to be very thankful. He's our host, and he's, we've been trying to get somebody to explain it. Clearly, and you just did it for us. Yeah, so when you're divided, it turns out with that you can just add the numbers, the digits together, and do your uh, mod 9 arithmetic that way. By adding them together? By adding 1 and 6, you get the same as if you divided right. 9 into 16 and you look at the remainder. It works. I mean, and it, 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 it's, it's not too hard to show that either, right. mathematically. Right. And you just did it real well. Thank you. So. So the reason I'm reducing these to single-digit numbers for you, everybody, is because I'm going to show you how to look at time. 
I could explain it more, but I'm going to be short words. Okay. So 16 doubled is 32. And I really mean C time. When I say, look, everything I'm saying, I mean literally. And 3 plus 2 is 5. Everyone following that? This is a steel rail. You must stay on it. It's a train track. You can't go off it. Okay? Now, 32 doubled is 64. And 6 and 4 is 10 is 1. Back to 1. 128, 11, 2. 256, 13, 4. 5, 12, 8. 1024, 7. Etc. It'll go on infinitely, of course. Everyone follow that? Remember, I'm trying to show you how, from the inside, it crosses the axis, that, there's, that it's very important that I'm trying to show you there's something inside it. There's something in the middle. Okay? No one's ever been able to see this inside the middle before. Okay? Okay. Now, um... Assistant Judy, please. I need the Easter eggs. Would you please, while I'm explaining this, take out one Easter egg, anyone you want, and put it right where it belongs. Okay. There you have it. Okay. <laughs> Goes together, right? You guys like Easter eggs? Yeah. Can you hold inside? Huh? Yes. <laughs> there's uh, there's nothing in them. I've I've been trying for weeks to figure out what to put in them. I can't figure it out. Oh, crystals. There we go. Put crystals in them. That's a good recommendation. Okay, I just flipped the chart. Oops, too soon for this one. It's okay that you soft though. No point in having your mind race ahead, though, because the secret is, is we've got to be calm, cool, and collected, then we can assimilate better. Relax as we can be, and as comfortable as we can be. Isn't that relaxing? <laughs> okay, here we have... Going backwards, we see that the 1 connects to the 5, okay? So, we're going to go backwards instead. So, a half of 1 is 0.5. A half of 0.5, okay, there's a 5 and I think a 5. Then a half of 0.5 is 0.25. But 2 plus 5 equals 7. This is where it starts to suddenly hit home that you're about that you see that I really am meaning perfection when I say perfection. And what and why is there what does perfection mean in your life? This is when it starts getting personal to you. And, and, and when you start taking it internally. Okay, so now point twenty five is a point five is a half of point twenty five and point twenty five half of that is point one twenty five. Well one plus two plus five equals an eight still. These numbers are never changing, they're never moving. A half of 0.125 equals 0.0625, which equals 13, which equals 4. Half of 0.0625 equals 0.0325, which equals 11, which equals 2, equals 0.0625 if we half of this again, which is 1. And I can't say the numbers after that, I'm not going to try because it's just too long. Does everyone understand that so far? All I was doing was happening? Um, our end goal is to explain eternity. Because eternal, eternity is that linearity. This emanation is eternal. It's the light of eternity. And that's we talk about in our aura, we talk about it in the radiance of good health. We call it prana, chi, orgone, spirit. Indians have many names for it. 
That's timeless, though, isn't it? No. That, that, uh, or, or at least it's timeless in, in this, well, I'm picturing it this way, correct me, please. I picture it as... Um, Actually, I was wrong for of, saying out no. Of the, um, out of the plane of the circuit of, um, of time, it comes as a perpendicular, uh, and its intersection with the time is uh, what we're seeing there, but it actually comes perpendicularly out. Okay, so uh, in that sense, it's dimensionless only except when it intersects the... Uh, totally correct. Yeah. Pretty heavy duty, huh? Yeah. I call it omnidimensional. So that, that's why I say it's hard to talk about linearity because we think of linearity in, in three dimensions, and, and it's out of it's really out of out of the dimension of three D. I suffered walking down the halls of UCLA. They say, "Well, you should be going to to linear science." I go to the professors of linear science, and they don't all their everything is curvature. Yeah. And I'm saying, "What's going on here?" I, they they don't even use the term. Well, we're still modeling that in terms of, of what we see every day. And, and, and we're using models, and it's very hard to depict that because it's, it's, it's beyond our perception. I was like 17 or 18, and I just said, the name on the door doesn't match in the science building with the, the math department. With When they're saying linear science, linear mathematics, I said, where's the linear? Yeah, but they're talking about something different. Totally, yeah. What he just said was that this energy going out is omnidimensional. The only thing that we can have for an analogy for it is the queen on a chessboard. You know, the old king, he's really straddled just one little step at a time. He's definitely hindered, okay? But, uh, or a duke, or a, um, a king, or a castle, they move certain ways. But the queen can move diagonally, she can move horizontally, vertically, she can move any way she wants. She defines, defines the whole game. She's our most prized piece in the game of chess. Okay. Yes, Judy? I don't know if it's appropriate to say this, but um, in my mind, God and man, and then the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God is this. The, the an energy or action or the life that we have from God that connects us is the, the spirit of God. If you want to go with that word, the Holy Spirit, or whatever you want to call it. Spirit is fine. But if you want to be fancy, you can call it a theta particle, okay. tachyon, why not? Graviton, uh, so is monopole is fine. What the, is hmm? that what that is? That's what that is. It is the glue that holds the universe together. Sometimes you call it, you know what you can call it? Sometimes people call it love. Yeah. Okay. It's the, um, you know, it's the observer in the subatomic. It's, it's omnipotent, omniscient, all observing. It is God's neurons. It is how he is seeing us, no matter what we're doing at all times and all places all the time. It's how he keeps us on a leash, too. But that's a little heavy duty. Right. And it can be the little voice. And it can be what? The little voice. You know, the, 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 the teacher, the witness that we are, that we, we, we have a witness that... Um, it's in, that's right. Everything we do is inscribed in crystal light because of it. That's right.